Okay, so let me let a grade. Copy this. Um, let's see. <clears throat> This is letter grade. The last T letter grade. This is the T X T letter grade. Okay, so I call mine T X T letter grade and, and so on. So you can, if you call differently, then you just have to um, you can just reference it. Um, <coughs> that should be fine. All right, so in here, um, so did you do a function or did you just do it, put inside the code into the uh, subroutine here? So um, since we know the average, right, <coughs> and then we want to pass this average to a function, okay, so that's how I would do it. Um, if not, you could also, uh, you know, just call the get average here, and inside that function, it will still be fine too. Okay, but just say that we we already learned how to use functions. Uh, want to practice by passing data, or um, you know, to a function to do certain things. So let's let's just say we're gonna pass the average score to a function to get the highest or the the letter grade based on that average score. Okay, so I'm going to do right in here. <coughs> I'll call this function just um, to say get letter grade. Okay, I'm going to pass the average grade to this letter grade. If you use a parameter, that's how you do it. If you didn't use it, you could call it directly like you do here inside the function to get the average, which is fine in this case. But I'm going to do it by passing parameters to this average here. So I'll just say here AVG um, grade as double. <coughs> okay. And the return type will be a string. You can return as a character, which is fine too, right? A, a, a letter. But I'll call it, I'll use string. And then here, <coughs> we just basically compare this average grade here. And based on this range here, so I'm gonna move. Let me move this range down here into the functions. You can see them. So that is the average grade. We want to return that letter grade A, B, C, or F based on that range. All right. So how do you do from here? How do you tackle this problem? So up here, um, let's add another parameter. Uh, call it letter grade. As um, let's. We'll use string. It could be a character, but I'll call it string. And then the letter grade will be um, equal to get letter grade. Okay. I'm going to pass the average grade to it. Right. It's already been calculated here. Pass that to the, to the letter grade function, and that will return A, B, C, or F to this letter grade. Right. So let's do the uh, algorithm part for this letter grade function. So what did you do? Did you use, the, did you use if or select case block, or how did you do it? For those of you who have completed this part. <coughs> Is if block? OK. So what did you compare? Mm -hmm. OK, grade is grade equal to 90. Okay, so we'll do another here. Um, I'll do a dim at a grade. A string, right? Mm -hmm. We'll add a grade equals A. Good. Then? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Let me just. Okay. Oops, I do something here. Else, letter grade is F. All right, <coughs> and then. Return letter grade. Right. All right, we'll see if this works. <coughs> okay, um, I think I have some errors in here. I might have uh, the Quran. All right, so let's see if this works. Uh, I want to also output this to the text box, so I want to put the text T text higher letter grade dot text assign that with the letter grade so it's already text so we don't have to do any type of formatting here just letter grade <laughs> you could uh, use like two uppercase it's just in case uh, you can force it to upper right assuming that if you return this as a lowercase you can force that just to make sure but you don't have to in this case all right, so uh, let's see. Um, I'm gonna run this grade, and we will do a 90. Let's just yeah, a 90, uh, 95, um, 100, perfect score, and an 80. Okay. So we calculate, and then the average is 91.25. Highest score is 100, and the letter grade is A. Agree? Looks good. All right. Um, I should probably have another uh, button here to clear it. Let me just do that really quick. So when I, um, well, okay, we run it again. So this one works fine. If I end again, now if it changes to like a real low grade, right, the average will drop. Um, again, this average grade is not for a student. Well, that's just for, for a student has taken like five grades, five exams or tests, and he got a letter grade based on that. So the letter grade is now dropped to C because 77 is uh, in the C range, which is good. <coughs> okay, so so far so good. If I put a, a you know a 10 here, it gets lower and lower, so you get F because 65. That's good. Okay, so let's try one more time. And if I do like uh, 80, 80, 80, and 80, so let's say I have perfect 80 score. Now, why do I get an F? All right. Mm hmm right so you want to you want to say including inclusive okay mm -hmm. so if you didn't include this uh, everything is false it's gonna go to the F okay so but really good though I mean you, you got the right idea so here will be uh, here inclusive 80 so we say greater, greater than or equal to 80 okay uh, greater equal to 70 we include that score <coughs> and uh, <coughs> once we fix that then it should it should not work. Okay, so perfect, really good. <clears throat> so this is how you pass data to um, a, a function. If you didn't pass the average here, then you could do without it. Uh, but then inside here, so if you do that without the average, because it's available in the form, you could just say uh, the average here. Or you could do like get average, right? Get average. And you can call the function directly in here. Okay, since it's a function, you can call it directly, and so you don't have to use a variable name. If you do that, you can uh, you can you will still set get the same result. So if I do this, 
right? 90, uh, 98, 9, 7, 7. Okay, it should still work just fine. Okay. Another part you can do is the return statements here. Uh, <clears throat> notice that you have a letter grade is A, letter grade is B and C, you know, at the end you return a letter grade. Okay. So inside a function, which we didn't talk uh, um, this part yet, but we will talk about it now. So inside a function, you have to have one of these return statements have to be called. It doesn't matter where in your code. Okay, that means that I can have uh, multiple return statements uh, as long as only one of those statements is being called. So what that means is in here, since I have the if if here, this block of code here, which is real good, guarantees one call, right? If none of this is true, it's going to call this letter F here anyway. Okay? So that means instead of saying letter F here, I could just say return F. Okay? Return F here. I could do also the same thing here. Return uh, C. And then return B. Return A. Okay? I could do, I could do all of that. And if I do this, I don't need a letter grade. And this part, though, I don't need either. Okay? Because one of these will run. And as long as you run one of these here, any of those statements, is uh, the return statements, then the function stops right there. Okay? Um, so what that means is I don't need this. Right? I don't need, if I take all these out, you'll see that it's really short just like that. If the average grade is that, then return the A. Otherwise, you complete the next grade, return B, and return C, and return F. Okay. This one works because the else part is the catch all, right? If none of these is true, we always, always return F. Okay. If you don't have the else part, then let's just say if you only do this, right? <clears throat> you have a problem because there's no way out of this function. If none of those is true, then you don't have a return statement. So in the, if that's the case, then you have to put a return statement down here, uh, maybe physically, um, explicitly put that outside of the if block as a return statement too. Just make sure that if none of this is true, you still have to return something back. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> and so the way you have it here, it looks, looks really nice, looks good. Okay, so you can see how short that code gets. Um, <clears throat> And then it looks much cleaner this way. Okay, you can do the same thing with the select case. Right? So if I were to do this in, in a select statement, um, we could let's see we modify this with a select case. Okay, so we can say what? Select uh, case the um, average grade. So we get the get average grade, right? We call the function. So if we didn't pass it, we, if you pass it, we call the av get average grade. Case <coughs> if it's uh, greater than 90. So here we can say uh, greater or equal to 90. If that's the case, then we return A. Same thing, right? Case <coughs> uh, if it's the grade is between 80 and 89. So you can say 80 to 89. Right? Remember we use those case, you can do a range of numbers. <coughs> then return uh, B. And if it's at 70 to 79, then return C. And then this is the case else part. If it's none of those, then return F. Okay? So uh, you can also use, if you do this way, um, <coughs> Code a little bit shorter because you don't have to you don't have to type this whole uh, case here, but this is the only way. There's no way to get out of a or get out of this uh, if block. Okay, that'll work fine. But with the case, you shorten that to a certain number to a certain range here. And Visual Basic is probably the only language that I know that allows you to do this with that range, and it makes it really simple uh, to compare any range of, of numbers. And just by adding that there, you can say if it's that there, if it's um, or if it's a, a, you know 101 uh, to 110, you can add a range of data in there as long as one is true, 
it will execute that block. So really handy with the select case in Visual Basic. So that is the, uh, the um, uh, alternative uh, way to solve this problem. And if you run, you should still get the same result, right? If you put 80, 90, uh, 89, <coughs> it should still work just fine. So average grade is 89, 89 is B, okay? All right, <coughs> so um, that's good.